Good morning. Welcome to worship this Sunday, and it's good to have you all with us today. A special welcome to those that are listening on the radio, those that will be viewing us on TV or on YouTube later on. Members and visitors alike are reminded to fill out the yellow slips and hand those in after the prayer of the day. A couple of announcements to highlight this morning. Um, senior lunch is this Thursday at 11.30. Uh, the Board of Spiritual Life has an announcement in the bulletin. They are inviting us to sponsor items for worship. There's a lot of more details about that in the bulletin, so take a look at that, please. And Ashley Varga has a temple talk to share with us from the Board of Social Ministries. Good morning. They say a journey starts with a single step. Well, what if that step started without the protection of a shoe? I can't imagine not having any shoes to wear. I opened my closet and stopped counting when I hit 20 pairs. 20 pairs of shoes. What am I doing with all of those? What I could be doing is donating them to Souls for Souls. Souls for Souls distributes shoes throughout the United States and around the world. They accept all types of shoes, athletic, running, dress, sandals, pumps, work boots, cleats, dance, and flip-flops just as long as they are new or gently worn. The shoes you donate will go to the victims of poverty and natural disasters like hurricane, floods, or tornadoes. They will also be used to support micro-business to help eradicate poverty. And 100% of the shoes donated are sustainable. More than 99% of the shoes are used to help those in need and 1% of the shoes that cannot be reused are directed to a waste to energy facility where they are used to produce environmentally clean and renewable energy. So clean out your closets and please help us support this amazing charity. The Board of Social Ministries will be collecting shoes April 14th and April 21st and you can just look for the boxes that are marked Souls for Souls. And the Board of Social Ministries is also collecting donations for the Baguette Run, which is hosted by Panera Bread and Turning Point. Uh, Turning Point is an amazing resource against domestic violence. And if we raise $250, Emmanuel's name and logo will be on the event t-shirts. And if we raise $500, our name will go on the t-shirts and on three Marion area billboards. Uh, we have baskets at the exit and the uh, gathering space, and you can also give at the church office, in, office until April 10th. Thank you very much. Would you please stand for the confession and forgiveness? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Let us come into the light, the revealing and healing light of God. God of grace and glory, you have brought us through the night of sin into the light of Jesus' resurrection. Yet our lives are still shadowed by sin. Make us alive in Christ, O God. Make us new as you make all things new. Rescue us from evil and the gloom of sin. Renew us in grace and restore us to living in your holiness. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Rejoice with all creation around God's throne. The light of the risen Christ puts to flight all evil deeds, washes away sin, restores innocence to the fallen, casts out hate, brings peace, and humbles earthly pride. Jesus Christ loves you and frees you from your sins by his blood. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our gathering hymn is that Easter day with joy was bright, hymn number 384.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. The for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah. Let us pray. O oh God of life, you reach out to us amid our fears with the wounded hands of your risen Son. By your Spirit's breath, revive our faith in your mercy and strengthen us to be the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from the fifth chapter of Acts, reading verses 27 through 32. When they had brought them, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. 
and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the first chapter of Revelation, reading verses 4 through 8. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witnesses, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and the children are excused for children's church at this time. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the risen Lord Jesus the Christ. A little boy was watching his father, who was a pastor, write a sermon. He said to his father, Dad, how do you know what to say? The father responded, well, God tells me. The boy replied, how come you keep crossing things out then? (laughs) I have found myself in that predicament many, many times, except in my case, I just keep hitting the delete key all too often. I often find myself doing the same thing when I pray, too. Doesn't that happen to you sometimes? 
when you just can't seem to come up with the right words. It's as if God needs just those right words in order to listen. And do you really think God's insulted when we happen to use words that are a bit clumsy? I don't think so. But this does make us shy in regards to praying aloud in a group, doesn't it? How many times have you sat at a meal or a meeting or at a Bible study just hoping that someone else will lead the group in prayer? And then if we do have to pray aloud, we always think that someone else's words are a lot more meaningful. And then how about if someone asks us, asks us a question about being a Christian or being a Lutheran? We really start squirming then, don't we? We often feel a little bit inadequate when it comes to sharing our faith story. When it comes to sharing the story of Jesus, the story that we have heard oh so many times, the story that we have just heard the climax of as we have just gotten through Lent, Holy Week, and Easter. Sharing the story. That is what we are to do as Jesus instructed his disciples in Mark's gospel to go into the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. And in Luke's dis gospel, as the disciples are commissioned, Jesus reminded them that they have been witnesses to the Messiah's suffering and rising from the dead on the third day, so that repentance and forgiveness is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations. This, then, is the same message that Luke recorded in the fifth chapter of Acts that we heard today. And we are witnesses to these things. God raised up Jesus. God exalted Jesus at his right hand as leader and savior that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So Christians have been witnessing to the great things that our Lord Jesus Christ did for some 2,000 years now. And we still have a difficult time doing it ourselves. We ask ourselves, where are those words? We want to think that in order to witness to the love of God, to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that we have to be Bible scholars. But this is certainly not true. The disciples themselves were not scholars, per se. Now, they did have the advantage of being there with Jesus as he journeyed on this earth. But we have an advantage over them, as we have 2,000 years of witnessing preceding us. And we have the whole story recorded for us. So how can we go about witnessing, testifying to the greatness of our Lord Jesus Christ? How do we find the words to do so? I think all we really need to do is ask ourselves, why are we here today? Why do we make it a point to worship and listen to the word of God on a weekly basis? Now, some of us may have a story of how God amazingly showed up in our lives at just the right time. Stories of how we were on the verge of bottoming out to our addiction and we just happened to find a Bible in the one-star motel room that we had ourselves locked up in. And we started reading, and once we did so, our life was changed forever. Or maybe how Grandma was taken off of life support, and it appeared as though nothing could help her live another day, but she regains her consciousness and is back home, all due to the great power of prayer. Or how we were walking down the streets, wondering what in the world we could possibly do to get our business turned around, a business that had sucked us out of all of our savings, a business that was going to finish in the red for the fourth straight year. And we just happened to open the door of the church we are walking by. Jesus invites us in, and from that time on, somehow we're able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And life is good again. Now sure, these stories do exist. 
And I am not underestimating the power of God or the power of prayer in these stories. And I am certainly not being critical of those who tell these stories. These certainly can be remarkable stories and are certainly worth sharing. But as I talk to fellow members of this congregation, as I talk to fellow Christians in this community, it seems as though these stories are not the norm. Many of us have not had any earth-shattering experiences that have turned us to our Lord. Instead, many of us have realized the presence of God in our lives from the very first time we can remember attending Sunday school as a small child or attending worship with our families. Many of us have been truly blessed with the fact that we have not had to experience any earth-shattering experiences in order to know that Jesus is walking with us every step of our journey on this earth. So what does bring us here week after week? Well, I think it is indeed an earth-shattering experience. It is the story that we have listened to the past several weeks and the story that John echoed as he wrote in the salutation of his letter that we know as the book of Revelation. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom. It is the story of the love of God that forgives us through Christ Jesus, that makes us one as the body of Christ, that invites us to live in the kingdom of God here and now and for eternity. That is why we are here. It is the same story that the senior choir shared with us last week on Easter Sunday, as they sang that we learned that God could be a friend as we read the stories of how Jesus healed the lame and made the blind see again, and how his death wasn't the end, but the beginning of life that is completed in each one of us. As he rose, as the Son of God is alive. Yes, the Son of God is alive in our lives. Just look for him as he enters our locked rooms as he allows us to see his wounded hands and side. Jesus lives as we think of the stories that convey the joy of the family and the congregation as we baptize an infant during Sunday worship. Jesus lives as we experience the peace we find as scripture is read along the bedside of our dying parent. Jesus lives as we experience the contentment of the consoling words of funeral liturgy. We all have our stories of Christ in our lives. Stories that from one perspective seem small, but in actuality are life-shattering stories. The happiness that is shared through our cherub and junior choirs. The satisfaction of helping meals prepare meals downstairs or downtown. The love and fellowship that we are part of as we join in a Bible study or prayer group. The pleasure we partake in as we hear the words of our favorite hymn. The bliss that the words of Scripture bring to us as we read on those lonely early mornings. The grace that we are gifted with as we eat and drink of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though we have not seen the risen Lord as the disciples did 2,000 years ago, we have seen the power of the resurrection. We have experienced the resurrection firsthand. We have our stories. We have the story of God and his only Son and the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Now we are to share these stories with others. We are called to share these stories with the world, 
We are to share with our friend who is struggling with his or her faith. We are to share over the fence with our neighbor who is disconnected with the church. We are to share with our old high school friend who is dealing with bouts of depression. We are to share with the acquaintance we meet in the doctor's office waiting room who is facing a battle with cancer. These are our eyewitness accounts that God is with us, that Christ is alive in our lives. And we do not have to be concerned about how interesting we make these stories or how grammatically correct we relay these stories. These are simply our stories, the church's stories, the stories of the love of God, and our words do indeed come from God. And we have no need to cross out any of those words or to delete any of those words. We can simply exclaim with doubting Thomas, my Lord and my God. The Spirit is at work giving ordinary, doubting people like us extraordinary boldness to declare the core beliefs of Christian faith in our ordinary conversations. God's wor God works in surprising ways through unexpected people, and we are those people. God works so that the good news of Easter can be spread throughout the world. With the Spirit's help, each and every one of us can indeed give eyewitness accounts to that truly earth-shattering experience of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that you make your home with us, bringing heaven to earth. Fill us with your spirit as we go from here, that we may wipe away tears. Tend to those in mourning, those in pain. Seek the healing of nations and bring to earth the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue our worship with the hymn of the day. We walk by faith, hymn number 635.
We gather today as fellow believers in our risen Lord. Let us join in professing our common faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Rejoicing with all the witnesses of the resurrection, let us pray in confidence for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Give your church a sure and certain hope that overcomes doubt and fear. Fill us with the peace of Christ so that our lives proclaim your forgiveness and life. Today, we pray especially for the congregation and leaders of St. John Lutheran Church in Deschler. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Open our eyes to see the abundance of water and nourishing food you provide. Help us to work together so that all have access to clean water and adequate nutrition. Hear us, O God. Inspire the leaders of the nations to work for peace and justice for all your children. Teach us to obey your commandments and live in peace. Hear us, O God. Ease the burdens of all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. We lay before you John Millizer, Melissa Green, Roberta Fitzpatrick, and Bob Pugh, Jerry Anspaugh, Sandy Mitchell, Iris Zuckerman, Virginia Leffler, and Beverly Lama, Dee Sherwood, Shirley Clark, Lakin Dawson, Ruth Rowland, Kara Basil Russell, Sherry Isler, and Tom Porter, Sandy Pelfrey, Natalie Walker, Jeff Longberry and Lisa Krieger, Joan Chapman, Alvina Keeley, Dorothy Simmons, Julie Hoke, and Craig Zarzichny, Monica Rall, Juanita Deal, Anna Jane Foltz, Pastor and Ruth Wolf, and Francis Hoffman, Dorothy Anderson, Bryce Mitchell, Patricia Walder, Marcia Wall, Jeanette Maurer, and Velda Hoffman, Larry Ashida, Judy Stoner, Polly Matthews, Michelle Cole, and Donna Queen, Dorothy Taylor, Christy Curran Ludwig, Betty McLaren, and Eileen Carpenter, Joyce Milner, Marla Vance, Diane Sherrick, and Dixie Davis. We pray that you be with Diane Schering and her family as they mourn the death of Diane's mother, Darla Tack. We also ask that you be with all those in care facilities, those who are bound at home, all those who care for others, our military, and all of those names that we place before you at this time. May you grant healing, companionship, and hope to all who live in fear. Hear us, O oh God. Strengthen this con congregation to sing songs of hope and promise. Raise up musicians who will share their gifts and lead our praise. Hear us, O oh God. Fill our hearts with joy and gladness as we rem remember those who have died believing in life in your name. Reveal to us the joy of your salvation, even in the face of death. Hear us, O God. In resurrection hope, we commend to you all for whom we pray, 
trusting in the promise of new life through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of God's peace.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your holy name and join their unending hymn. Earlier, Pastor Mark said these words over the bread and the wine. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table of life is spread before you. Feast on the goodness and mercy of God. You may be seated.
you please stand, clasp the hand of someone nearby. Then may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and you in his grace. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. We give you thanks, O God, that you make your home with us, bringing heaven to earth in this holy meal. Fill us with your spirit as we go from here, that we may wipe away tears, tend to those in mourning and pain, and seek the healing of nations, and bring you to earth the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The blessing of the Lord God Almighty, the blessing of Christ, the Lamb who was slain, and the blessing of the Holy Spirit of truth be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our sending hymn is Thine is the Glory, hymn number 376. in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God.
We at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Marion want to thank you for joining our worship service today. We hope that today's service was both uplifting and has enriched your spiritual life, and we would certainly welcome and encourage you to visit one of our services in person. Our services are Sundays at 8 and 10.30 for the traditional worship service and 9.30 for the contemporary worship. We also have a Thursday evening service, and the fourth Sunday of each month is our gentle worship service. We also want to thank you for your continued support of our television ministry. Won't you please help us continue spreading the gospel of Christ by sending your donations to Emmanuel Lutheran Television, 241 South Prospect Street in Marion, Ohio, 43302. No gift is too small and will help us continue with our goal of spreading the word of Christ. So until our next broadcast, God be with you till we meet again.